So this is the um, very uh, specific and special um, program of Adam um, this year. Um, initially, Asia Discovers Asia Meeting for Contemporary Performance, Adam, is a designed um, platform for um, performance-based and also interdisciplinary artists um, to come to Taiwan physically for artistic um, exchanges, um, as well as welcoming uh, international visitors or practitioners and producers and curators to um, um, to through the gathering, public gathering program, getting to know each other, and also um, this platform serving as a networking um, space as well. However, since last year, uh, due to the pandemic, we um, urgently shifted the whole Adam project into an online performance project called an Internet of Things. So in that addition, we has, um, you know, as everybody has, uh, we have started exploring uh, possibilities of gatherings, liveness, performativities uh, to be uh, enacted. So through this um, idea and at the same time being expanded, this year the Adams program has disseminated into different parts. So the first part will be still physical artist lab, which will be held in this August in Taiwan, um, basically inviting Taiwan-based or local artists to do on-site research of Shilin district, where the Taipei Performing Arts Center, my background, <laughs> the picture of my background, will be located and open, uh, scheduled to open next year. And the second part is we launched an open call for ideas, which is called rehearsing for the future. Uh, in this new open call, I think I think the, we are still accepting the applications, right? Submissions. Uh, in this uh, rehearsing for the future open call, we are calling ideas from artists from different parts of the world uh, who define themselves as Asian. So that could be individual, collective, or non-Asian and Asian mixed group um, to propose ideas or a research-based project that will uh, break the boundary of the uh, restricted mobility. So it could be, this idea could be, you know, rehearsing the performance format of digital settings or physical settings that can be instruction-based or um, can be involving less or non-human travel. So this is uh, also a, a new project that we are calling people, um, calling artists in Asia. And, and through this program, we also wanted to support um, and to, and to encourage Asian artists to do such research about you know, developing um, performance-based format for the near future or so-called post-pandemic era. So the third part is um, the Adam uh, physical gathering. Normally, every year we, we run it as a full-day public program. However, this year we disseminated this program into three seasons in April, August, and December. So in April, which is now at the end, oh, we are actually on the first day of May. This week uh, is the first season of the Adam Online Program and particularly curated by performance artist, Melati Suryadamo. Um, actually, Melati and I have been involved in conversations since last year. And we have been, you know, sometimes um, meeting uh, with each other, particularly for other projects. Sometimes we appear in windows on um, other people's platform or conversation um, symposium. And then I have been very fascinated and curious about getting to know uh, Malati's practice and notions towards the near future, which is actually uh, also called the, the, the post-pandemic uh, settings. And how... Uh, Melati is a performance artist that mainly use her body as the medium to create and to think and to challenge um, all kinds of boundary of things can survive or can uh, expand further her thoughts 
and practice with body and time and duration and ritual and spirituality to make a next step for the future form or the future notion of performance art or life art. So uh, Melati was uh, interested to explore more um, together, inviting her friends and colleagues to talk about um, from each of their different practices, how their practice and um, discursive progress can better facilitate and sustain um, the environment and the ecology for now and, and, and by gathering uh, different uh, people from different parts of the world uh, who are interested in performance-based practice can learn from peers and to, you know, together dive ourselves into this thought-provoking program. In this program, which was uh, started on Tuesday, and today is the last day of this five-day uh, five series, uh, we have had a uh, doctor and artist, Diane Butler, who is actually here as well. And <laughs> hello. <laughs> and Natasha Tongte, uh, and also also here. Hi, Natasha. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, artist from Thailand, Golagri Adu Long Chai. And yesterday we had uh, American choreographer, Max Stewart. So, each of those artists has already uh, contributed and provided us um, embodying the element, uh, elements of performativities and ritual and spirituality, memories, identity, psychology in time and space. And today we are approaching the last section, which is serving as well a closing mark for this series. And so Melati uh, will be contributing to us in uh, this section entitled Body's Speed and Labs, based on her ongoing research and, du uh, and practice of duration, long duration of performance or performance art. So I'm gonna introduce you to you a little bit about Melati. Um, I'm gonna check. <laughs> I'm gonna long, I have a long introduction today to do. Okay. Um, well, I personally will say not officially, but personally, well, maybe officially as well. Um, Malati to me is the Asian, Asian performance art diva. <laughs> well, she has received her uh, master's degree on performance art in Germany. Later on, uh, she has been um, presenting her work uh, between uh, in Asia, in Europe, and beyond. And she has been also um, uh, directing an artist-run space called Studio uh, Plasangan. And alongside that, mainly her practice is informed by Bhutto, dance, cultural study, and history, among others. Her work is the result of ongoing research of the movements and body and its relationship to the self and to the world. And so these practices are enshrined in photography, translated into choreography, in act in video or live performance. Um, and also uh, Melati has been presenting her work uh, in, uh, locally in Indonesia, as well as across the world, including uh, National Art Center Tokyo, Japan, and National Museum of Contemporary Art, MNCA, uh, Korea, and also Singapore Biennale, and also KW Berlin, among others. And she has been also participating in many performance art and dance festivals. Actually, in Taiwan this year, uh, Melati will be presenting her choreography in Taipei. However, she will not travel herself. But she, she, she has been collaborating with um, um, Century Contemporary Dance Company uh, with their uh, Taiwanese dancers uh, to be staged uh, as a new production this summer in Taiwan. So let's welcome Melati for her section today. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Um, I think my internet today is a little bit troublesome. I think everyone is staying at home and uh, uh, in Saturday. 
So today is the first May. I'm sharing, I would like to share my spirit of labor. We are artists as labor. Do not forget that uh, we still have a lot of um, elements, a lot of things to, to be fight for. So <laughs> I must do like this. <laughs> and, um, and uh, yes, we often forget that um, that the artists actually part of this big labor spirit. And uh, in the art scene, we we still uh, see a lot of uh, discriminations and uh, unfairness in the business, and also often like uh, exploitations of workers. So um, if we are concerned about that, and I think uh, our art ecosystem will be uh, better in the future. These days to remind us for that. Um, yeah, today I'm going to talk especially about um, how I think about time, about speed and laps. Um, I've been dealing with a long durational performances not only, I also did many short durational performance, but in most of my works, I'm focusing on the long durational performance. Why long durational performance? Oh, the, the gecko next to me is making it. <laughs> uh, it's, it's giving a good sign. <laughs> I'm interested um, actually I was introduced to long durational performance by Marina Abramovic. Um, I was introduced about this, the history of performance art with long durational performance at school. I learned the Western history of performances with long durational, uh, long durational performances and also which involve uh, ritual elements that indirectly connect with long durational sense. I'm very interested how how time is presented. I also learn or being influenced from a loop, from experimental film, from video art, and the sense of loop, the, the understanding of loop. And I think. Um, if we deal with time, we are mostly forgotten. We, we forget uh, the meaning of, you know, like the, not the physical time, but the sense of the feeling of time very often through our routine, through our daily life, pressure, or even happiness. If you are happy, you forget time. <laughs> Very often, if you are waiting, you remember, wow, so long, time is so long. But when you work for 30 years, and then suddenly you come to retirement, oh my God, I've been working in this office for 30 years, every day from eight to four. So time is, very mysterious, and um, I agree with my colleagues uh, like Korapik and Meg uh, about the sense of time, how we preserve time also in our body. I'm mostly referring to the historical um, package, historical memories and uh, those who influence my being at my present now. I want to show um, one of my work. Please show the first video. This is this without sound. This um, one of my first long durational that I did very long. It's um, it's called Black Ball. That time I was created by Marina Abramovic uh, to perform 
during the retrospective of Egon Schiele. And for this exhibition, I performed eight to 10 hours uh, for four days. I was sitting there like this, holding a black ball, very quiet. I was very excited the first time I did this because normally I had another long duration of performance, but I did it only one day. But this one for four days and then another four days, I also continue with another work that it was in collaboration with my and Oliver Lohmeyer uh, in another work, another four days. So the whole eight days was for me um, an examination, a kind of examination to understand what is, how, what is it, the long durational in me? What happened in the long durational performance? What happened in my body during the long durational performance? This piece is about um, reflecting the yeah. I was interested in the study of organic movement, the image of chair and an empty chair that's um, from flat, like a flying chair. And so uh, I decided to sit down because Egon Schiller was very famous with uh, his drawing, um, his young, young girl drawings, uh, uh, women drawings. And that was uh, making a scandal in Vienna in the early 20th century. So just being quiet and very minimalist moving and um, in this museum setup, it was for me like I was ready with the, with the, with the concept, like a stillness, an emptiness, and the principle is a symbol of the guts that is not exp not open. So it's a simulation of the inner that is uh, sometimes, um, I don't know, in Germany we call it Schweinhund. It's like the enemy of our self inside. It's our ego enemy. So by sitting still uh, and as a woman that has probably, at that time I was having a lot of, um, uh, something in my gut that was not expressed yet, that was not exploded yet, uh, or that was not uh, able to be visited yet, so that I put this kind of constellation into stillness. The public was mostly coming in and out, like in the museum, and um, I was not worried about not to be seen. For me, a performance, I think a performance art, a durational performance, is the most important part is the act of doing, is the actions, I'm doing something, I'm doing something with reason. So the language that appears through the image and my actions, uh, according to the perceptions of all the viewers, is open. And in that kind of um, dialogue with the public, I think for me, the, the, the energy that is happening on the space is, is completing the work. So long durational performance in the spirit uh, of feminism, for example, also like to express the, the presence of women in labor, especially, which I actually, uh, it was uh, Faith Wilding, uh, the early feminist uh, performance artist from New York, who performed waiting, and she was sleeping, waiting for the man coming home, waiting for the baby is born with, so the rep like the repetition of intonations of her phrases uh, for me, was very inspiring and make me a lot of um, make me think a lot about our presence. So, in a system of time in our life, I think we have been constructed and have been forced or have been 
put in a situation where we have to adjust, we have to, um, how do you say, um, settle and arrange. Uh, every day we need to arrange our time. We should manage our time. We should um, move on. And but very rare we think, oh, we take time. So we are always like putting ourselves into the speed of the, the time that is actually um, projecting our desire. So our desire to the future, and then we project, okay, in two years, I must get this. In four years, the country must have this, this, this. As a government, they always project like programs like uh, for five years or 10 years, and really like seeking for the future. So, and the desire to be there, to be in the future, is a human character. It's a very essential, natural, basic character that, uh, that everyone has. And if we project it uh, as from our individual state, I think uh, we know probably how we keep our pace to the front or we don't want to move like people like people who are um, uh, in the frustrated time and like many now for example probably happening during the COVID um, people get stopped from moving People, people get slower, like we, we are yeah, forced by the situation to be more slow, to wait, to postpone, or even to cancel. And so um, every during dealing with this time measurement, the sense of time, the projection of ourselves into time. For me, also reflecting uh, space, space for, in the sense of um, giving space for me to um, to accept uh, what is happening in the past in my memory. My memory doesn't mean my personal memory only, but for example, the memory of my culture the memory of uh, my origin, the memory of uh, mankind, the story of mankind. Um, I would like to show you the second perception of patterns in timeless influence. The title is a little bit long. <laughs>
This time in 2007, I was invited by um, Lilith Performance Studio in Malmö. Um, very interesting space in especially dedicated for performance art in Sweden. Um, I was invited uh, to perform there and um, that time in 2007. I was learning um, about a traumatic event uh, in the history. So I was dealing, I was like researching what happened in in the 16th century when the Nazis came to Indonesia and followed by the um, POC, the Dutch company for uh, um, trading uh, and followed by the long-term colonialism in Indonesia. Uh, since 16th century and uh, the history altogether put as 300 50 years under colonialism of Dutch. I was very curious to what happened um, in, in Europe uh, during that time. So I studied a little bit and also um, um, to understand, like imagining the parallel work between the Asia, uh, the Indonesian, the archipelago of Indonesia at that time and uh, what happened in Europe were a lot of changes also in the 16th centuries and it has been also a lot of changes in the 16th centuries in the in the southeast area uh, southeast asian area so but i was focusing what happened uh, with me uh, like if i understand the history of the of the past of the colonialism, what remains in my soul in my life now. So I was thinking there, if I thought too much about the history and I thought, wow, it's in some event, a historical event must be a very traumatic event. And um, generally seen because you cannot, you know, like visiting the timeline of the, of the history uh, you need to go into the details and you need to go to the um, very good uh, historian writing that uh, brought a lot of evidence about, about the event. But uh, unluckily in Indonesia, there have been not so many uh, evidence of the history. Um, <clears throat> um, I thought that time, yeah, if we were carrying our historical baggage until today and uh, we were made to be different, we were made to be, uh, to be become the other, the other. And uh, how we deal with a, with a traumatic event that reflect our, um, our recent culture. So for example, how I see well, how I myself see or consider, for example, automatically when I was young, that Europe is higher, Europe is culturally higher than, uh, than us. So everything that we are seeking is to be equal with the European. And that is actually a traumatic mental, <laughs> for me, traumatic mental, uh, disease that is uh, carried uh, from one generation to the generation until we often feel uh, lack, a lot of lack of confidence. And of course, um, I think maybe because I studied international politics, so I was inspired to, um, to learn more how does it affect psychologically in, in our presence uh, if we refer to our history. Uh, this is my, my case is one example, but there have of course many nations like 
with German with the Third Reich and uh, Japan with the uh, with the Second World War uh, story his history of racism in the 20th centuries and and before you know and so <clears throat> I thought how do we heal with uh, the the trauma that that appears in the time we were living like. Uh, the trauma that appears in our ancestor or in our great great grandfather generation, and that is carried on. The seed of the trauma is carried on to our life. How do we deal with this? And so uh, I was involving this, some symbols, like I was inviting my VIP guests. There are seven rabbits uh, who actually has the potential of healing uh, trauma. That's why the children who has specific traumas, they are suggested to, to have a rabbit as a pet. Um, so I lock myself in, in this um, rabbitarium, <laughs> in the glass box for five hours. And I invited uh, um, Angelica Ask and David, the violinist, to, to, to play um, from Matthew's passion, gluten. And I thought gluten ore is a very, um, you know, it's like the, very representing the desire and, and the sadness at the same time. And I, I was also at that time researching where the color red come from uh, in the Baroque culture in Europe and how does it, how did it intertwine with the spice uh, spice trading uh, from Asia to um, Europe and you know and all these things so I can also show um, share now another work that um, also created in 2007 which is called I love you I will share I love you. I love you. I love you. So it's a five-hour performance that uh, where I carried a sheet of tempered glass and carried and moved with the glass for five hours in a space that is all red. I'm using and the phrase "I love you" and repeating it. I love you um, all the time. I love you. I love you. For me, you. Uh, in this performance, uh, the long durational sense of uh, time is giving a space to I love you. have thousands or millions of elements that appear from one thing, appear from one action. I love you. I love you. I have chosen I love you. It's not because of its romantic I reason. I was criticizing, not criticizing, I, I was you. interested in the constructions of language. I love you. Uh, in our, our culture, I love you. in our life. How we deal with language, how we are using I language. And how does, uh, how did the language was created? How does language can um, express or it doesn't our uh, mind I love and you. thoughts. 
how Otol will carry to this also to our life. I love you. And so, I was um, I doubting a little bit about about um, this um, like the construction of language and uh, in terms of the use of in, in the communication. And um, if we communicate to a same language, that even there, there are laps in understanding, there are um, miscommunication, there are misunderstandings. If we, if we communicate in different language in our you. head, like now I'm, I'm talking in English. I uh, love you. I've been trying to get used with English since I was in the high school, but still. Uh, I love you. I love you. Inner. So. Uh, since I'm a cons I'm a person with, who is constructed by many language, like Javanese and, and Bahasa Indonesia and, uh, and English and German. So sometimes there are chaotic also in my head. So how can I how can I construct? How can I uh, deal with this all constructions? So language represents also the way uh, a culture life and uh, the way the people are living, the way the people are living together in the society. I love you in the, I love you, I love you, I love you. I love you in every sentence, in every time I say I love you is somehow, um, it's a common language that we use uh, to, to express our love feeling. But language is um, becoming a mean to, to express or be connect, but sometimes it is also causing uh, chaos. Like now, we, especially now, in 2007, we were not dealing so much with the social media, but now, especially during the pandemic, we have been you know, like, like digging in or being trapped or drowned in the sea of language uh, through our digital communication. And uh, how can we get, you know, like, um, like the space become like an open space? How, how can language become an open uh, platform to to everyone. So, in I Love You, I was thinking, oh, by doing it, our sense of, of feeling of I love you is not that important or it is not that um, presence anymore. Like, as even I just waiting for like for five years to say I love you to someone. It's totally different. Like, when every day you say, I love you to everyone. <laughs> although, although the spirit is probably the same, but in, in different contexts, then, then, um, then the sense of love is also like blur. The sense of love is merging with, with anything. And um, this process of merging, I think, it's important part for me, and um, that's why it takes time. It takes five hours to, to have, you know, like this, this uh, sense of, okay, the I love you is not uh, important anymore, but the full thing, like the dragging glass and the voice, the movement, the, uh, the heartbeat, and, and the energy that is built uh, within the space. Oh, do we have enough time? Yes, okay. okay. Time. Okay, so um, I often got asked that uh, 
wow, it's like a long duration of how you also, you have very strong physical um, endurance. And it's not about the endurance. Uh, it's not about the, the, how strong my physical can do. Uh, long duration performance is not in one genus but like um like i to show some you know like uh, wow i can do like 24 hours dancing like like a, a kind of a um uh, pioneering the, the endurance but it is more about really the concept of time it's about how i as a performer melt with the with the count the, the time with the quality of time and, and give also space for for my inner uh, happenings for my inner not inner experience only but my inner movement um, For example, for my long durational performance, I decided like there are three hours, five hours, eight hours, 12 hours, um, three days or four days or two weeks. Um, uh, I decided according to normally to my biological rhythms as a performance artist is it's a it's it's a must that uh, we must know our biological time also like for example three hours performance for me is more heavy than 12 hours performance sometimes in three hours like within three hours i always get this my intervals going down and where I get very sleepy early, <laughs> or very weak and oriented and so on. But um, in certain words, I like to have it uh, when my body is getting weak and the performance is like just like that, like like the, the one I did, which is called Alelino. I did not show this here. Alelino is one of uh, my first uh, long durational performance. Maybe I can find, I can show a picture. Mm. Uh, where I made this uh, research on, on the, to find the sense of spirituality and, and with emptying self. Um, show. So I stand on a plane on a, on a um, what is what is it called um, on a level that is quite high, one and a half meters. And I put this long bar, wooden bar, into my solar plexus. I I love the, uh, not, you know, this this whole constellations is uh, coming from the idea to connect with the earth and human and the, the triangle between the nature, human, and the god, and. Research uh, by visiting some transgender shamans, the Bisus from South Sulawesi. Um, I made some interview with them. I was asking, I made friends with them, and uh, it's been then becoming a long friendship with them too. Um, that inspires me and teach me how, how to get into this emptiness to be non-present, to be um, like the nothingness. 
So <laughs> solar plexus is like uh, in the martial art is a uh, point of death. So when you hit your solar plexus, your life is in danger actually. And, and by dealing and by putting bar, wooden bar, end of the wooden bar into my solar plexus and leaning it for three hours. It took me a uh, quite um, very heavy, intense effort um, to, to be just be nothing. Even if I think about something, then it became very painful and my physical condition become very weak. So if I just listen to my breath and slowly into the state of emptying mind and like a meditation, maybe uh, like maybe meditation practices, but uh, um, I'm supposed not to be too much like in too relaxed meditation, but keep my awareness in the, that almost probably I would never say that I can be in the zero, state, but almost in the zero state. So life is about balance um, with our time, with our lifetime. And this balance is uh, something that we often forget in our daily life. Um, so, um, yeah, so when three hours performance that I tried to not to control, but I try to let it, to let my body with the time and with the condition and be surrendered with uh, the being. And I thought um, in the contrast, by keeping, keeping, keeping the awareness not to fall down um, is three hours is the maximum. So that's why I Decides performance for three hours. For myself, I when I decide, like, okay, I'm going to do this performance for three hours. Uh, but then, if my condition during the performance like collapse or or I could not continue anymore, then I stop. Even if it's just one hour or two hours, because it's not about you know like reaching the goal like the, until the end. But it's about the doing itself. So if the time and my condition doesn't allow to continue until the end, then I accept this. And that is already done. Something like that. And um, meantime, um, long durational performance become like like many of of. of at this long performance. I also learned to decide from Marina, also from it's like uh, Black Market International, a group, a group of performance artists from several countries who have been, they don't like to be called as a group, it's just a BMI, Black Market International artists. They have been in and out uh, united or been present since in the 80s until today. Um, they are mostly Anna Maya seniors who are, you know, like over 60s and, or at least my age. Uh, the youngest, I think Helga Meyer from Germany, they, he's about my age. And uh, there's Alistair McLennan, Boris Nisloni, uh, Miriam Laplante and others. From the minor uh, elements uh, that is like performing up for us. So the audience are interpreting what they are doing. They are performing with themselves in the, in the interaction uh, with the objects and without arranging like um, something that is a particularly strict or prepared or, you know, like I want to use that, that, that. Everyone is carrying object and, and they don't plan. 
they in, not improvise, they mean it. They, they are doing it. They have their thoughts and minds, and uh, and it's uh, the the art of encountering. So from that, I learned. Okay, how do I encounter with the public? How do I encounter? How do I encounter that in while I'm in my performance and watching? Then my desire to to give more time then um, encouraged me to have a long durational performance that. This one uh, was 12 hours. A ghost, I'm a ghost in my own house. Sorry, uh, uh, did you say something while playing the video? Could you say um, it? Could oh. hear? Yeah. Sorry, uh, could, no. you, could you say again while you were playing the video? You say something, right? Could you say again? Because we oh, you cannot hear anything because mm. the video, the sound of video was loud. Ah, okay. So I'm a ghost in my own house was a long uh, work of observation. 
and trying to understand the notion of welfare, of uh, well-being, and death. So I've been observing for many years about uh, homeless people that from the places, uh, cities, countries I have visited, and um, how how the how they are how they are um, you know, like finding place of sleep. Normally, I walk in the night and I'm observing. Oh, well, there are some homeless people in different country, different. Um, care of the country for the homeless people. Like in Singapore, I almost never see uh, homeless people sleeping on the street. Maybe I didn't uh, observe enough, but I don't think it because I have been very often in Singapore. But for example, comparing to Indonesia or in Mexico or in the Philippines, uh, um, many, or even in Germany, many are very. Um, yeah, not having anything. And, and I was wondering, uh, the feeling is like when I watch and I observe, I, I remind myself like, oh, I have a home, I have a family. But when I was home, like, I felt like I was floating like a ghost. I've never been really like feeling like I have a home. And uh, as well as when I am in Indonesia or I was in Germany, I felt like I'm a floating ghost. Um, I'm always like, uh, I felt like as a stranger uh, in my own house and uh, felt like never really found something to grasp. And for me, it relates a lot with um, understanding or perceiving the idea of um, being in our time, being in our lifetime, and how to accept this. And so, I learn always something new from a new process of making my work. From that uh, process, I learn about how death can be still meaning, you know, meaningful after the death. Uh, that is symbolized in the charcoal. Um, how, um, how, for example, uh, our um, attachment, attachment to to the world, to the world of material, and how we how we can be you know, like be free, we have our freedom uh, in our relationship from our material world. That time and uh, 12 hours, uh, it's a long, long time. Um, and the 12 hours, the half day performance cycles that is um, also my um, the sense of the feeling that when I'm doing it and the repetition uh, that brought me into a certain layers and very often in my long duration performance that these layers of uh, new layers that I haven't visited before new layers that that I have not seen before is always a special um, experience, um, but also like, yeah, a, a new new library into my my body. Um, yeah, I think also uh, idea of relate with the chaos. And the chaos of, of of the now, the chaos of our presence, uh, the chaos that is um, happening in our, in our mind, because time is, has been representing nothing but itself. 
actually. It's just that try to people try to to put the meaning time uh, and in the certain representative notion. Um, I want to show one more work, maybe uh, that could be interesting. Very short one. Is it okay, River? Do we have enough time? Yes, please. Okay, I think it's okay. Okay, we skip into it. Almost the end. So transactions of follows uh, was made in 2017 and uh, 2016, and uh, it was commissioned by the Lilith Performance Studio again in Malmö. Uh, it was a four hours performance, but for two days. And so um, I was using the Indonesian um, archery. Indonesian uh, archery and bow and arrows. I was thinking that time about uh, about how a human desire, human desire that is um, creating our mankind history. So that has been existing since the early of our mankind history, and human desire that politically uh, in the political sense I think um, it's almost always reaching a kind of uh, never-ending dream or 
somewhere that we never know what it is. Always like the desire is always uh, involved uh, from in, 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 in any of our uh, political aim. So by aiming the future, uh, future or vision future, I think is also very much related with our utopian character. Um, the way I perform and uh, very concentrated and I learn how to do it uh, properly. And the sound is created by the construction of the, the special construction of the wall that creates that on purpose to create the sound. And the loud sound is to uh, remind us also of moments. Um, in my early works, I used to have a, uh, it's called a lullaby for the ancestors. I'm using a Western cowboy uh, whip cracking. That also, that time I was thinking about like, uh, about the moment. And um, butter dance, my extra G butter dance, is also about catching the moment. And this one also about the moment. Um, the public, the viewers who are also in the same room with me, um, are sensing their fear, are sensing their, um, their, their natural, um, animistic way also of to protect themselves. When I stretch the arrow and point it, and they suddenly they're all moving behind my, my back. And, and I think it becomes very interesting interactive with the public because uh, we are dealing with uh, sometimes unpredictable, fearful time. And like, and hopefully it's getting less this and but we are experiencing how how it was how it is how fearful it is i think that's it for myself thank you thank you malati i tried to speak slow before because i was um thinking like maybe my english is not so <laughs> <laughs> when I'm presenting my own work, I'm maybe like a little bit groggy. <laughs> no, no, it was not true. It was articulated. Yeah. Very it, was a, it was like, sounds, sounds to me like retrospective <laughs> of, your, of your trajectory of some works, some important works. Yeah. Are you with me? Melati frozen. Oh, you're back. Internet is a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I'm back. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No worries. Um, yeah, uh, I know your internet here today was not very um, steady, mm -hmm. but uh, we we're gonna we're gonna edit um, before we publish, and you can correct or um, add some informations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Thank you, Malati, for sharing, um, generously sharing so much to us. Um, I found that um, most of your works or the, you know, the, the anchor the core or the core of your, of your artistic practice mm -hmm. is, um, is so primarily based on rituals. Like there is, um, qual uh, there is a ritualistic quality of the way that you perceive and you do or you spend or you work with time. And then coming back to the um, initial idea of conceiving this program, back to rituals, uh, I wonder, could you share more about like how you see rituals in your work through the sensibility or uh, the sensation of time or through the sensation of encountering, 
like what do you, what what does rituals uh, what does a ritual mean to you and in your work? So uh, traditionally, um, I'm quite uh, familiar with a different kind of rituals in terms of here with spirituality, religious religion, and, and so on, uh, but also uh, traditional rituals that actually originally, um, in, when I was a child, they are they are independent from from the notion of religion, and um, like for example, there are different kind of rituals for since like when you are born until you you die or even after you die. And it's okay, my Yes, yes, sorry. <laughs> so I thought um, I was very much inspired with uh, some rituals, uh, some rituals that involve also performances. For example, uh, in Indonesia, am I also again, or oh, this is very troublesome. Can I uh, just make it to Maybe I should change to my mobile phone tethering first. Is that okay? Yeah, sure. Yes. You cannot re you want to reconnect with the internet, right? Okay, I'm back. Is it better? Yes. <laughs> I, I hope. Because, you know, I don't know, it's, I'm, I'm in the village and, and sometimes the internet connection is not good. Even mobile phone signal is sometimes not good. Anyway, we try. So I'm learning a lot of how people, you know, are uh, using objects and how the gestures in the traditional ritual, the, the gestures, they are, they are presenting something like the symbols or from the object, of the all the movement uh, of the ceremony and also the sense of the, um, the energy, the spirit. And this, I, if my experiences, I have never forget, you know, it's something that is uh, planting into, into my body, my memory in the body. But um, mm, Ritual is actually, for me, the most important part is the doing, the, the act of doing. And by doing, we are not playing theater, like, like in the theater is you are uh, playing a role. But in the performance art, I'm doing it with a certain, uh, a certain idea, a certain concept and certain aim. And so uh, it's, that that's how I adapt uh, from the idea of ritual, where the relationship between the the body and the this not the desire, the body and the presence, the mind and the actions is in one unity, and so um, in many of the um, ritual traditional ritual practices. Uh, they are all, all the all the participant participant of the ritual. Um, the main participant, of course, they are very. Uh, in in I think I see them like that also, like when they are all give the offering. They're giving the offering. It's not they act like they. It's not the plastic offering. It's a real offerings. The objects are real. It symbolizes like life wisdom or whatever. And uh, in a certain time, like sometimes in the, um, yeah, some ceremonies can be happening in the sunset time or it must be happening in the night, it must be happening before the sunrise. 
or in the daytime, you know, and it's always related with a certain time. And so um, I, I'm very much, uh, yeah, inspired by, by that kind of practice and, and because they have also like certain reason why, why they choose the time for the certain rituals. Mm. And I think um, maybe I'm like trying to um, my effort because most of my work like quite minimalist, although some materials are a lot, but in terms of actions, I'm not doing uh, like too many actions. I'm mostly doing one action in repetition and, um, and stretch it into certain time. The repetition itself, uh, I also adapt a lot of uh, ritual practices like um, mantra and uh, like doing mantra and then you repeat the mantras and there is a certain level where, where you can uh, have a certain state of mind, something like that. Mm. Uh, uh, sorry, by the way, Andalea said thank you, and she or he is needs to leave. Mm -hmm. I think that that, that sentence uh, is too good for you, Melati. Um, yeah, we uh, we now have a question from Hong Kong Purple Masaltis Wan Yao. Said. I want to ask how you develop your work in your own cultural and other cultural contexts, contexts as you studied in Germany and with Abramovich, et cetera. For example, different cultures have different ways of seeing time. Mm -hmm. Very, hello, Wen Yao. <laughs> Long time to see. <laughs> uh, yes. Um, Oh yeah, maybe that's also a big influence that um, I have been living, I used to live in Germany for many years, like almost 20 years. And since 2015, I decided to live in Indonesia and gradually already, you know, some time before, but still going back and uh, forth to Germany, between Germany and Indonesia. Uh, but yes, um, Actually, uh, the practice of performance, long duration performance, and of course, I was introduced by Marina Abramovic, and I was encouraged to, to do a, a, a long duration performance. We joined her, her workshops, her class, uh, like routine uh, annual workshops, which is, you know, involving fasting and certain uh, exercise for the whole two weeks without uh, eating and um, and try to to really like getting our body into the, the yeah, maybe the zero point and i think uh, that also influenced me to re to rethink what i have what we have in in my origin what we have in indonesia and how um because some of the exercise also adaptation from different cultures that Marina uh, put it into like certain way or certain inst instruction of exercise. And, and so actually Indonesia, I thought, wow, it, actually Indonesia is very rich, <laughs> very rich with a lot of um, knowledge, like we called yesterday as ancient knowledge and uh, that becoming the resource also of my, um, how, do you, how do I say, not because, not resource of my creation, but um, it accompanies my process. So before I was like very occupied with the, the Western philosophy, um, I love, I love readings. <laughs> So then they influenced me, of course, and they in, the influence is uh, still until today, but I'm using the influence in a different way. Like I'm not uh, looking at my own culture as a Western viewer, but uh, with, you know, like the, maybe more like, uh, like if you have dust and put in the, 
what is it like in the water and then slowly it will come down and so uh like this this particle that is arriving in the bottom and and uh, it looks like the water is very calm but then i do something i mix the water and it becomes you know like it, again like wow many elements is appearing so um i am part of course of this culture that i cannot detach and um, but for example the problem for me is like always to work with the, the notion of identity that i have done in my early career like when 20, 20 more than 20 years ago and um, but identity a cultural identity is not what i'm really mm, interested in but how how i live with the culture and how how i learn from from my nearest surrounding is the most important part because my real real recent life now uh, in indonesia is is not in a very traditional context is not about the um, i cannot see the ancient um, knowledge if i just go like like this in my daily life you know but if i think oh what is the you know i need to give an effort to understand uh the the, the very um specific uh, notion of the ancient culture but yeah you know like it's always a confrontation between the modernity and the tradition and so uh, how i try not to involve a very um uh, not to involve a traditional elements although i'm like using the the javanese archery uh, but it's not when i'm doing it i'm not like a javanese woman i'm not wearing kabaya and kain uh, you know and then doing the so i try to to work on the this notion of a cultural representation very careful mm. yeah and in terms of this different aspects of um viewing cultural contexts there is a question from chen saying uh do people or the viewers or audiences from different countries seeing your work very differently basically um uh, chen is wondering how you consider presenting your work in different contexts how you deal with this gaze or view actually i'm not really like i said i'm not focusing on the cultural representation but rather uh, uh accepting uh, that everyone has their inf uh, their cultural influence in their life and so i'm trying also like uh in, in the terms of the performance action and in the in the representation of the work trying to be as simple as possible like as minimal as possible as honest as possible uh, without bringing up uh, cultural um, images or, or what is it um, yeah cultural material into the work itself and uh, so that probably many different cultural background would uh, probably understand uh, because um, I don't like to be, I'm tired to be seen, you know, like as an Indonesian representative of a culture. I've been living in, a, in, a, in, a, <clears throat> in Germany for a long time as a foreigner and as a stranger and then everywhere I am now, uh, I feel like uh, abroad or like in, a, in a strange country, in a foreign country, I'm a stranger. And one thing that makes me uh, felt like always confronting my my inner being is like, why am I different? Why am I seen to be different? And so I will not uh, try to focus on that different uh, thing in uh, through my work. That's why mostly I have very uh, you know like I were I use objects that is everywhere is existing. I use um like mostly black or white or red you know that 
that uh, doesn't confront too many interpretation on the clothing, uh, but still, you know, like very uh, um, su suitable to me and comfortable. But also uh, the most important part is how to, to deliver the, the idea of, of my performance actually uh, to the audience that they can have their own interpretation from my actions rather than my uh, ornaments, uh, cultural ornaments, I would say. Um, yeah, and also could you talk a little bit why? Why let the kitchen round the work? Why let the chicken not kitchen? <laughs> why let the chicken? <laughs> Sorry, chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, while the chicken run was uh, made was created in two thousand in um, in next for an exhibition, uh, a little bit of history repeated, uh, created by Jens Hoffman, uh, it was performed for the first time at the Kunstwerke in Berlin in two thousand. I think two thousand. Yeah, I think two thousand, and so uh, it was really based on on the i was inspired by anna mendieta's work uh, where she basically i'm i'm inspired also by a lot of uh, inspired a lot by by anna mendieta especially her presence as a woman and how she um, put her presence as a woman in relationship with the nature with uh, the social context with the political context. Um, while at the Chicken Run was also, it's very short. The, uh, it's very short performance, <laughs> and and I I try to let the uh, there's there's a, actually a rooster, black rooster instead of white chicken that Sana Mendieta was doing, and uh, I want to let them uh, to let him uh, run and catch him again uh, instead of killing and 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 telling you know and, and letting the blood flow in front of the people and um, i thought um rooster symbolizes a lot of characters in asia especially uh it's it's a macho it's a pioneer is uh like you know like leader and and I'm also like from the rooster year <laughs> in my Chinese so yeah. So it's it's quite a um, strong symbol, but uh, like by letting it out and and catching it again, I'm also talking about freedom and and freedom and power in in, diff in many different contexts, yeah. And also, you know, like um, I'm also like a little bit. Uh, that time I was thinking like why uh, performance many performance arts are using blood and cutting and like uh, pain in, in, you know like uh, so much pain in the body like to, to have like a like a voluntary catharsis uh, under the name of performance art and and so I was like that time I, my knowledge was still limited of course I'm telling about that time, <laughs> the early millennial <laughs> time. And so um, I was thinking, okay, no, no need to use blood or to, to use that kind of elements in, in nowadays uh, uh, time because we have immediately, we can receive immediately um, news from what, hap what happened uh, from other part of the world without resonating our body to be representative of the happenings of the other part of the world. And the visual attack from the news that is, you know, like from the BBC, from the uh, mass media, and all this visual uh, um, representation of, of the world's happening is, is, is much more stronger than the 70s or the 80s, for example. And so I thought, uh, how to talk, uh, how to bring up ideas, to talk about the political situation without, you know, like being like uh, 
picturing the devastating image that we have received enough from the news. Uh, even nowadays, you know, like per click, you know, most of the journalists using mobile phone, like in Indonesia, journalists using mobile phone to text um, news, you know, that is sometimes correct, sometimes, and but mostly also not correct. <laughs> so, uh, but pictures are not lying. Pictures they send in the immediate uh, transfer, I think. Uh, well, there are manipulated also. There are manipulated images, but, but uh, most of the official news, they are, you know, like, yeah. Enough images of the devastating world and uh, to... I, I would rather to represent the, the, the vulnerability more in a very, uh, uh, very soft and, uh, let me say, touchable in terms of, uh, yeah, it gives more space for the, for the, for the public or for the viewers to, to, to activate their own sense. So not, not determining, so this is what happened, this is bloody war, and then I show blood a lot, you know. But how blood can be more simple, how blood is, is very close to our flesh and our, our life, or to our breath, and so something like that. <laughs> Yeah, um, we have uh, several questions in relation to the idea of symbols. Um, so uh, let me let me contextualize a little bit. So okay, we have um, and a question from Jia Yu saying asking, um, "Thank you for this inspiring presentation. How do you prepare yourself, like your body, your mind?" before each performance, as there set rituals such as warm-ups routine for dancers, that what would you do or normally what do you do before you enter or begin your performance? And how do you return from those status? Mm -hmm. And at the same time, there's another question from um, a feminist artist from Taiwan. Um, she was typing in uh, Mandarin. She's asking, uh, Melati, do you always perform by yourself uh, in your work, or sometimes you could be absent in mm -hmm. your life works? Mm -hmm. So, okay, my I ask a question. Um, my preparation is uh, it depends on the performance. I like, uh, for example, but normally, first I. Uh, this is my personal ritual. I'm, it's actually, okay, now I can tell. <laughs> uh, I always have to eat before, uh, like at least the latest, like one hour before my performance so that I have time to go to the restroom and that my digestion is already, you know, like working well and then everything like settled down inside. Uh, but also, I try to, um, mostly, I have to be very calm. I have to be ready. Um, I have to get fresh myself. Like, I wash the whole body, hair, and brush my teeth. And I only eat rice and only rice with egg and tea with sugar. <laughs> Black tea with sugar. Uh, that's the most powerful <laughs> <laughs> food for me to, to survive for, for uh, 12 hours. And um, is it frozen? Am I frozen? Ooh. Hello? Am I frozen? No. No, no you are not frozen. Oh. You are not. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay, thanks. Uh, so I was thinking, uh, look, no, my ritual uh, before I perform, I, like, yeah, of course, a small warm up and and uh, breathing exercise is very important. Um, I've been practicing Sumara meditation, like a Japanese meditation uh, that that uh, helped me to. 
to cool down, to relax my mind, and to be ready with my body, to go into the element of my organs, to get all ready. Hello, liver, hello, lung, hello, heart. And uh, let's go together with me and and uh, let's, let's let's start something like that and so um yeah actually that's it and after the performance normally i don't like to see the public and uh normally i just get yeah relax and cool down because some performance if it's like long duration of performance like it took me also like innerly quite sometimes quite heavy so when I meet people after performance and talk, and especially like some some want to have an interview with me, also I I'm, uh, sometimes I refuse because it, it's quite hard afterwards. Afterwards is harder than before. It's not because I'm tired, but mostly like mentally is. I need some space to slowly, uh, you know, coming back. And uh, what was the pin one show uh, asking? Uh, her question was uh, is do you do you always perform with oh, your, yeah, yeah, yeah. your work so there are some works like like the black ball now i delegate uh i delegate it, uh, this performance to be performed by other performer and also uh the plaidung's uh, offer also i ask uh, other performer to perform in the installation of like a tree of clothes, clothes, uh, like I built an installation of like seven meters high uh, tower or tree of clothes. And uh, one person is hugging. Uh, it's now exhibited in the Machan uh, Museum in Jakarta. I also have the Sweet Dream Suite that is also performed by uh, at least 26 uh, girls, like 30 pairs of uh, women who perform uh, as pairs and, and perform together um, for three hours. So some, some work I, I really dedicate. And before, before they do the performance, I give some workshops and then mentoring how to do, uh, how to stay with a black ball for eight hours, <laughs> for example. So what do they need to prepare and how, how they, control the breathing and the mind is very important because to control the mind is the most uh, difficult part. If you cannot control the mind, then you get very easy tired and, you know, and losing the energy. Oh, there are many questions from... Yes, oh. yeah. There is a, a Gilal, uh, I guess, French artist. Um, Guillaume, <laughs> she's. Uh, he said, "I'm curious if you could speak about your pictorial uh, slash visual inspiration as each of example you share with us. Beyond the minimal actions, offers a very precise tableau through colors, costumes, setting, framing, and how those choices relate to each thing." Mm -hmm. Mm, interesting question. Hello, Guillaume. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I think I prefer this uh, more like almost sometimes monochromic <laughs> pictorial uh, image or settings or uh, colored uh, selections and object um, settings and so on. The opted, you know, like the the use of the object and I am very much influenced with photography also. Uh, I do also uh, video works. So creating some pictorial pres presentations is for me is like one uh, process of viewing and uh, how it is, how I view with my two eyes and what I receive uh, from what I have seen and into my mind. So the dialogue between the, the retina, the, the lens of my eyes with what I see is sometimes um, um, 
uncontrollable, right? So in this world of too many materials, actually, and my wish is actually to dematerial, to um, sometimes to have to face just this nothingness. But of course, if I do some work, it's, it cannot. It's a little bit difficult to express the nothingness in the total. But uh, the idea of the minimalist helps me um, to to put the body uh, and the action actually as priority. So I like to see like um, drawing, black and white drawing, uh, drawing, simple drawing with pens, uh, outline drawing also on a white paper. <laughs> I'm very boring, <laughs> but I also love to see colors. But sometimes, you know, like if I see too much color things and it gets my brain tired. So I thought uh, because the priority is not the visual in terms of um, variations or colorful like this, but uh, I, I was attempting to, to represent the movement to be obvious. The, the changes uh, that have that is happening within the space uh, is to be more obvious. Maybe something like that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and I don't want to attack people with too many images, additionally, uh, too many uh, variation of elements on the setting. Yeah, something like that. But now I try to, I'm getting older, so I try to, to learn to use colors and maybe more cheerful. Um, but yeah, it's difficult, difficult. <laughs> Very careful uh, choosing colors. And, and I don't know, I, I feel like I don't want to attack people with too many information also. Yeah, um, followed by this, uh, I, I didn't forget Diane's question, but let me um, follow in Susan's question. So uh, how is the work, the practice evolving now as the body shifts with age and knowledge? Also the communication and translation of specificities you desire in a performative when working with other performers? Uh, the com communication and transitions of specificities. Specificities. Yeah. Okay. So, well, uh, the, the sustainable resistance <laughs> of the performance art is to, uh, in our agency, actually, as a performance artist, uh, especially female artists, I think to never give up because of age. So I never really, you know, uh, I, of course I'm aware I'm um, not like a shadow puppet uh, figure, uh, like or the Indonesian, Japanese uh, typical beauty <laughs> or dancers body, you know, but I'm by chance uh, in the nature having more weight uh, to genetic or reason or whatever, you know, and uh, I love my body as it is. And I think everyone should love their body as they are, their beauty, how they are, and they're beautiful as how they are. And, you know, that's that's a popular message, but as a performance artist, I think this is, that's why we are existing because um, we should uh, still keep the resistance against all the definition or limitation of the body. So even, I'm getting older, you know, like my seniors, like Marina Abramov is my father and many other friends of my father. Um, many senior artists are still like Anna Hartgreen, you know, John Jonas. They are still, uh, they make me, you know, like also, okay, you know, let's move on. I'm not, uh, I don't like to be like uh, what I have seen in my nearest surrounding, like dancers who are uh, on, coming to into 40 years old and then they stop and lots of confidence and I don't want to appear because 
I'm old and I'm not young anymore. And my after the birth, my body is exploding. And a lot of reasons that, that especially female have. And for me, um, one of my agency also like to encourage um, people. Of course, this my niece is aching and you know, like everything is changed suddenly after 52 years old now. And, you know, but I try to, okay, let's, let's enjoy the age you know, and, and do what I can do with my body. I'm still thinking like, okay, I was thinking like, okay, my butter dance, I will do again and again and again until maybe I'm 60 or older. But I don't think I can do like 20 minutes anymore. I, I can do maybe... <laughs> five minutes and then afterwards massage uh but you know like the spirit is different uh the spirit is the same but the, the appearance will be different and that changes actually is very interesting so yeah so like the age and knowledge knowledge i'm very curious always like even my body's getting older i'm i feel like every day i'm a newborn baby so i'm like <laughs> <laughs> like I want to know the world more, <laughs> you know. Like that's why I'm making this. Uh, uh, also, I'm happy to create the, the this program for Adam because I'm because of my curiosity, 100% curiosity to to what happened, you know, to the world. And so, so every day I feel like okay, like born new baby, fresh mind, and to see uh, positive. Yeah, I think that keeps me working also. And that keeps me also like um, my spirit to have some sharing in my studio here. We are going to have a Ramadan dinner together with my students, with all my team who has been working with us for many years. And so, you know, like I keep trying to share uh, the positive spirit of uh, learning and, and sharing. And that makes me forget about my age, <laughs> actually. And so, yeah, you know, like art, you don't take your art into your grave, you know, like art is, is part of this life. And when you make art, you, you are with it and with your life. And you are not separated. With, I'm not separated from my art practice with my domestic practice, for example. So mm. it's... It's all together intertwining and, you know, like sometimes I'm cool, like lazy, it's okay. Sometimes I'm off of work, you know, like, like this month. <laughs> I don't know why, but I've been working like, like crazy this month. Yeah. Yeah. So, and uh, what was it again? Uh, yeah. So how I, I share with, uh, you know, uh, through communication and translate specifically to Ah, yeah. okay. Yeah, so, yeah, of course, like, I did the workshop and I tell, you know, and I also adjust with their capacity of body. So, of course, I consider uh, others, uh, like the performer's capacity. Like, if, you know, if I'm also creating some choreography pieces that, that I also adjust with the, with the capacity of the dancers and, and uh, work carefully with them also. And um, I, because they are their bodies, like their, their life. So I borrow, I borrow from, uh, from them and uh, for my performance. And so, and I was thinking what I can return. And so probably the return is their experience of performing it uh, in, in the best way. So, so that's why I, I have to be very careful always because I have to, this principle of bo bo I borrow your body, I borrow your, yeah, for, for the sake of my idea, like I put myself like a little bit, okay, <laughs> you know, like the, the princess space is yours. Like I think most choreographer are like, okay, when you are not in, in, involved in the performance, then yeah, the, the, the stage is yours, the place, the space is, is the dancer's space, something like that. Yeah, your description reminds me that because you were, um, you were also perform um, and reenact your previous works in your Macam retrospective, right? The, Machan. The, Machan, yeah. sorry, yeah. Yeah, sorry. yeah so like it, probably you, 
you set up or you, there's a existing time machine of in your body that you can, you know, search them by uh, ritualizing um, all the process of performances and all the score or scores or texts of your your work that even though yes, uh, in somehow uh, things are aging. However, there is a time machine in your own body that to sustain you to keep rowing and um, bringing those spirits uh, alive again and again in this ritual process, I guess. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. Yeah, and we uh, in this we we have uh, in this aspect uh, we have Diane's uh, question about witness body in a ritual stage. She remembers seeing a video, I of I love you, and was very aware that it seemed like no one was coming up to help you at the just the that glass. But in another work, transaction of hallows. It was if the witness, the audiences could gradually find their sense of safety in the in the space with you and that uh, accurate arrows. Yeah, um, one I perform, uh, for example, let's say from butter dance from the XG butter dance. In different countries I perform uh, different reactions of the public, like many uh, like. Many women, mostly, they they did not laugh. If in several in several countries where where I perform, like some uh, men uh, audience, in the beginning they were laughing, laughing. Then at the end it was like coughing, <laughs> like feeling like choked probably. So, and and that uh, for me it's. Uh, interesting experience to always to do the butter dance because uh, the public uh, perceive it like psychologically and impacted their sense of body too indirectly and also their their uh, perceptions on you know on my presence as a woman and falling and up and falling and, and standing up again on the butter some scene is a tragic uh, Event. Some seeing it as a comedy, uh, but by the time then the comedy changed into some kind of a uh, psychological notion of each of the recipient. But um, yeah, in the I love you also different. Though. I, I when I I did the I love you in Malaysia in Kuala Lumpur in 2008. Some people really always try. Some women, not men. Some women try to help to to raise up the glass and. Uh, and then when I stand up, okay, okay, okay. And then when I want, I'm like going down again and try to, to move the glass up again. And then some people, are, I thought, wow, very generous. I did in Indonesia also in 2008, it did not happen. So I was very impressed in Malaysia that people, you know, like uh, um, coming in and spontaneously, you know, and, and helping. But uh, in many countries, uh, the, the I love you piece, of course, the setup is quite, uh, quite c clean and in somehow like my presence also quite distance, although the public's in the same room, because I'm not representing uh, like, um, like I'm not wearing dress, that, that's why I'm wearing a, a male suit, like a business suit and high heels and so but it represents also like, okay, you know, like I can do it because I'm wearing trousers and, and suit, you know, so, so some, that kind of, uh, uh, how do you say, that's one of the ways sometimes I, I manage how to, uh, to open up for space for the public, how come they can, how close they can come to me and how they can be more, you know, automatically distanced. And also, like in the transactions of follows, I, I'm very quiet. I'm doing my thing repeatedly, and so moving, just according to where I want to shoot. And the public is automatically, uh, actively, uh, sensing their safety feeling also. And we just uh, we forget uh, in our daily life very often thinking about safety. And I'm from Solo. I'm from Indonesia with a. Uh, 
every time I go on the road is my safety is in danger. And so uh, this kind of thing is quite complex, but it appears like in, only in a white box and uh, with uh, 800 arrows and, and audience. Thank you. Thanks, Molate. We have last question from uh, Yun Chen Chang saying, I'm curious about how you begin and end your directional performance through minimal actions. How this different, are, are, there any, are there any different phases during the performance in terms of dramaturgy or mindset about how you begin and end? Oh. Actually, the same like uh, when I'm doing any other action in my daily life. I start and I finish, and uh, the end probably will be marked by the changes of the space. But like for example, in the "I Love You," uh, uh, when I when when I start, the glass is there in the space, and I take the glass and I move with the glass and. When I finish, I, I put the glass in the space again alone, like as if nothing is happening before. So it's like uh, it's like that that uh, I'm not um, like hmm, how do you say it? If you if you mean like a, in a theater uh, or in a dance piece that, that is using dramaturgy and the beginning, the middle, and the end, and it should be like that? Um, no, because the end will be happening as it becomes because the principle, the, 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 my principle of making the performance is like to um, uh, to, be, to get this becoming and the, the becoming, probably if you call it dramaturgy, maybe the dramaturgy of becoming. <laughs> if, you, if you remember Antonin Arto, uh, about uh, his manifesto and you know, like the, the notion of becoming, and maybe through the repetition of action for a certain time, certain durations, uh, it never, uh, it never be like the beginning. It's always becoming. I'm always somewhere, become, arriving somewhere, and um, yeah, it's not, it's not the. Because I already set up the, the duration and the end is just the end. It's like sometimes uh, I even sense without getting sign from the organizer to load down the light. So I sense because I used to work long duration. So I said when it's on one hour, now it's two hours. I, I learn from my body. So when it's like 10 hours, okay, and then I feel awake and then okay another two hours and and something like this so I, I somehow i sense it and uh but i'm not thinking about when it's really end you know because i'm doing busy with doing it something like that mm. yeah I, I found i found uh because i do long duration of performance as well so I, sometimes i found that the the shape of time already end the ending point the end the end um only two ends from the beginning to the end however mm. at the end the ending point mm. at the end is somehow never end <laughs> never end never ending yes. yeah. like yeah. if it's a never ending story <laughs> yeah. so that creates the you know the idea of uh, the circulation of time or you know the circ the the circle um, space of time instead of a uh, linear time perspective. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think uh, time is also mysterious, <laughs> mysterious <laughs> thing. <laughs> you know, and since we are discussing about time, we should not forget our time because I think. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah thank yeah. you so much mm. yeah thank you everybody yeah i think thank you melati for um conceiving 
all all foreign contributing this series of in these five days. Yeah. Do you uh do you have any uh question to the participants so far? Uh, you mean me? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, uh, yeah, so I've been enjoying uh, the last five days and uh, I've been very excited. Like my adrenaline is like <laughs> jumping up every day. And I'm also like very happy to have uh, like Diane and and Natasha and Cora Creed and Meg, you know, and being with you here at the Tea Park team to be with you all uh, who are participating in the in the talk of uh, the last five days, and and uh, I think it's it's a very uh, special special experience for me, and um, it's very uh, fulfilling. Sorry if my presentation today is not like uh, yeah, you know, like I, I was not <laughs> really um, sure about my language, uh, but I think uh, the this Adam. It's very interesting to give uh, such platform and thank you for the opportunity uh, you have given to me to, to also unveil, you know, the mystery of, of uh, rituals and durations and the, how it relates with the body and the time. And so I guess this, this subject that is quite rare, actually, uh, it, it, it will be discussed in terms of uh, its relationship with the uh, performance art practice. Um, because ritual, for example, if you know the notion of ritual different in different countries, different perceptions, and um, and I, I think uh, if we dramatize about the, the ritual must be like this, like this, then, then you know, it, then it becomes more distance with our reality. Actually, in our reality, we are very close with uh, many kind of rituals, and uh, it's not necessarily to be always related with uh, spirituality, but often, of course, with spirituality and and the notion of spirituality. We can make another seminar or another platform about just talking about. You, you want to make another seminar? <laughs> <laughs> just focusing on spirituality. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I have some some interesting artists. Yeah, for for that, but mm -hmm. no, um, but I think you know, uh, some, uh, the interesting part of this pandemic time is that we also you know like reflect uh, things that that appears suddenly appears or actually it was been has been already discussed or thought but never really brought up into a kind of this kind of sharing and discussion. So I think uh, this is quite quite nice yeah it's very very nice not quite it's very nice uh, time yeah yeah it's been it's been really um stimulating um learning from you and your invited artists these days and it, it has uh kept me you know rethinking about uh the initial idea when we were discussing this program and then because you, you know, because in your also in your statement that you said that now we are um, we are confronting um, the 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 reality of being of uh, being survival, and then in terms of survival kit, how or what kind of um, notions and things and practices can become a means for us to survive in this. Um, um, current um, circumstances mm -hmm. and, and at the same time your proposition of back to ritual is well for me it, although it doesn't sound like getting vaccinated mm -hmm. you know that kind of you know sanitary or physical solution however um, for mental situations it is indeed uh, for me and I was like really appreciate about this proposition in these precarious um, times and like how how we can all together go back to rituals and in you know whether digital setting or any kinds of other settings to 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 you know to remember remember that once again we could be human. Mm. Yeah. 
Yeah, sure. And I think uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a weird time at the moment. And um, I think people are also focusing a lot on thinking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If we don't have enough platform for thinking, <laughs> then then maybe the world should be uh, maybe a little bit weird, even weird, more weird later. But uh, so like this kind of platform is yeah necessary that like, to to be more you know happening and um, I think yeah to to support our mental state also. Hmm. Mm. Indeed. Indeed. Yeah. Yeah. If you desire always like to be on site and like like Guillaume would come to Indonesia, my friends would come to Indonesia. Uh, I would like to go to back to also like to visit my daughter in Germany and so it's a little bit or a little bit you know like wow, a little bit difficult if you just think too much about that. So why not like yeah, thinking about okay, uh, our surrounding and okay. Can we clean the table and you know <laughs> <laughs> something real? <laughs> and and can we okay? Maybe the curtains should be washed and okay, Let you know, like <laughs> yeah, you know, like something like planting some vegetables and eating and you know, like something like that and and that's how it naturally probably works uh, in this time and then and then then the, the mind needs some feet also. <laughs> and so I think, yeah, that's why this platform is quite important. And I think like artists like uh, Tonte, uh, I'm sorry, Tonte, Natasha Tonte, uh, <laughs> she doesn't like to be called too much. Natasha Tonte uh, is very inspiring also to how she revisits uh, her ancestors mm. to uh, observing ritual practices and spirituality and uh, you know and finding probably the ancient identity express it into the future uh, digital language language and so on and so for me it's like wow I'm a kindergarten kid for that you know like it's interesting like also Kora kids and somehow now I understand a little bit more but like Meg is like kind of my generation and with Diane also, like we are between 50 and 60. <laughs> we we'll have like probably living in the, like uh, for some time in the 80s and 90s and and seeing the world today and how how artists are developing uh, the their work and how the contemporary practice in the visual art, in the dance, in the music, all developing in many ways and many op uh, openness uh, through open platforms like um, you know like I, I'm happy to have also like some music um, now during the pandemic like a special music program on the online radios mm. uh, you know, like selected alternative music and so on which is nice you know like um, but for yeah, for for now, I think uh, mm, like a, the school, the the absence of the school <laughs> is uh, must be uh, yeah giving a certain impact also. Um, probably everyone should repeat again. Like, how can uh, dancers like learning from only from YouTube uh, that the teacher is giving you know to learn certain dance and. Mm -hmm. uh, it's quite frustrating for I know for many dance students, uh, performance art students. I'm teaching performance art online, also like trying to follow up my the practice of my students. But you know it's very difficult. Right. We are we need to meet, <laughs> mm, mm. <laughs> and and, so, and then yeah. Mm. Anyway, but let's get us. Uh, yeah, let's share some strength until, you know, and wait. Until we meet again. <laughs> meet again, yes. <laughs> yes, okay. Thank you, everybody, for um, staying with us, still being still here. And uh, thank you, Melati, thank you very much. Thank you so much, you know, everyone. Waiting these opportunities and platform. Okay, so... Um, 
that's uh, so people. If you are interested in um, you know reviewing um, all this series of programs, uh, please stay tuned on uh, Adam's website or uh, Adam's Facebook. Um, we will be public. We are hoping to publish uh, all these talks as public resources um, to to facilitate um, our arts community um, very soon. So thank you. Good. Thank you. Good evening or good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Hope to see you soon.